Hey everyone, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader. I'm about to go on a very exciting trip which will be all about books and Latvian literature uh, because I'm going to Riga for a few days and I want to make a vlog uh, recording that and taking you along with me. But it's going to have a very special personal meaning for me too because it's going to be about traveling back to part of my family's homeland. I found that in the past year I've become much more interested in my family's history. Like, do, do you ever find this as well? Uh, that the older you get, the more interested you get in your own ancestry and your family's past and finding out about that. I, I think a lot of people have that same experience. So this all came about a little over a year ago when I made a video review of this novel called Soviet Milk by Nora Extena. And during that video, I also shared my family recipe uh, for piragi or bacon and onion rolls. And then earlier this year, the Latvian literature program got in touch with me asking me if I wanted to interview Nora Extena herself in person at the Westminster Library, uh, which I did and which was wonderful because I, I got to talk all about uh, her novel, which I really loved, uh, but also about our shared Latvian history and, and Latvia's history over the past century. Then a few weeks ago, the Latvian literature program got in touch with me again, um, asking if I wanted to come visit uh, Riga itself to learn more about Latvian literature and Latvian publishing um, in the current time. And, and so of, of course I do, it's, it's a great opportunity, but it's also motivated me to get to grips with and understand my family history a bit more because, you know, like uh, a lot of people I've like heard bits and pieces over the year from my parents, but I never got a full account of, of what that history is. And a funny thing about the Latvian literature program is that they, they run this whole campaign um, promoting Latvian literature all about how Latvia is a nation of introverts. And um, they, they ran this campaign under, under the title, I Am Introvert. And, you know, I've just naturally always been a much more introverted person. So it's sort of fun now that I can, I can blame that on my Latvian history and heritage um, because, you know, I come from a, a nation of introverts. So, you know, that's, that's my excuse of that's why I'm such a, an introverted person. <laughs> but my connection to Latvia is quite close because my great grandfather was actually born there in Riga um, and he emigrated to the United States in the early 1900s. Uh, he, he and his brother both left Latvia in order to evade uh, having to join the Russian army um, shortly before World War I. And, um, and my parts of my family, my, my grandfather, he, he grew up um, speaking Latvian as his first language and only learned English when he, he went to school. And um, so, so that connection is quite close. And in the 1980s, my grandfather and my father and other members of my family, they traveled to Riga um, to, to visit sort of, you know, the homeland and reconnect with some distant cousins who still live there. Um, so, so that connection is quite close. And now my going to Riga for the very first time, it's going to feel quite poignant, I think, because, you know, I'll be stepping in this to back to this time period and in this area of, of the world where my family came from or part of my family came from since my great-grandfather left there only a little over a hundred years ago. So I'm going to be taking a few different novels with me. I don't know how much reading time I'm going to get because um, I'm going to do a number of things like take a tour of the National Library and, and meet with a number of different publishers and authors. So it'll be quite exciting, but I've got a few different novels that hopefully I'll be able to dip into. Um, these are all translated into English because I don't speak a word of Latvian, so I hope um, um, more people speak uh, English there. Um, but I'm especially interested to read some of these short stories um, from this book called The Book of Riga, which was only published last year and is short stories by a number of different authors, all set in the city of Riga. And I just read the Ford by Vera Vik Freiberg, uh, who was the president of Latvia for almost 10 years, and she was the first female president of Latvia ever. And, um, and yeah, I'm especially interested in Latvia's past and, and how cultural traditions have persisted through different generations, because over the past few centuries, Latvia has been occupied by a number of different countries uh, like Swedish under Swedish rule and Polish Lithuanian rule and Russian rule um, and in the the last century itself for almost 45 years Riga was under Soviet rule it was forcefully incorporated into the Soviet Union after World War II and um, and a lot of people in the country found that those circumstances 
quite oppressive, and, and that's really well documented in this novel, Soviet Milk, um, like I talked about before. Um, so it's going to be really interesting exploring how um, Latvian cultural traditions have like changed over the past years. And it's really exciting how in the past, only in the past few decades, it's really been able to establish itself as an independent country and establish its 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 own identity. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling um, because I'm going to go off to the airport now, but I'm really excited to share this journey with you. I sort of feel like this is my own version of, uh, you know, that TV program, Who Do You Think You Are? So I'm, I'm sort of setting myself out on that journey um, because uh, in when I'm in Riga, I'm, hopefully I'll be able to meet up with some distant cousins of mine because I still have cousins that, that live there. So that'll be really exciting if I get to meet them. Uh, but also, yeah, just to explore the city and the culture and the people. So uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm here in Latvia and it's a bit surreal uh, being here now, uh, quite crazy, um, but really like moving and, and uh, beautiful to be in the city and finally be here. And so I, the, the hotel that I'm booked to stay in is across the road and across the river is the, the National Library of Latvia, which you can see right here behind me across the, the, the river, um, glowing really brightly. And uh, this, this library is also known as, because um, I've been reading some of the stories in this book in the plane on the way over here. And in the introduction, it talks about the, the National Library and how um, it's also known as the Castle of Light and the Glass Mountain. And it's known as the Castle of Light because apparently there was a legend that there was a Castle of Light in Riga, but then when Riga was oppressed by several different nations, that Castle of Light sank into the ocean. But then when it regained its independence, that Castle of Light rose to the top again. Um, and then it's also known as the Glass Mountain because there's also a legend about the Glass Mountain and the silhouette of the library is supposed to mimic that Glass Mountain and apparently in that legend there's a princess which sits at the top of this Glass Mountain waiting to be rescued by a savior and uh, you know I, I probably wouldn't be that savior to go up and, and actually rescue her. I mean I would go up and, and talk to her and chat with her and, and we would have a nice time and, and you know we can we can watch some movies and, and gab and it'll be fun but uh, but I, I wouldn't actually rescue her but <laughs> but uh, but yeah anyway I, I've been enjoying reading some of these different stories which um, show different aspects of life in Riga and different neighborhoods and different feelings of isolation that um, different individuals feel and like and uh, a different convergence of, of different cultures of um, Swedish and Russian and Latvian so yeah it's it's interesting reading um, some of these different tales I've been enjoying some of them and and there's a, a short story um, by Ilds Johnson called Welcome to the New Latvia, which um, is all centered around the, the Latvian National Library. So, uh, so yeah, and uh, I got this fun button uh, in my welcome pack that says, I am introvert. Um, hashtag I am introvert. I should get some sleep, but I'm, I'm very excited. It's, it's hard to get to bed now. But, uh, but yeah, I'll get to sleep and uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a number of different activities tomorrow and I'll check in again.
painting from English so everybody can see if I do something wrong. Just come up at the Emma. I read both the original and your translation just to point out how wrong you are. Everything from high fantasy to urban fantasy to steampunk to cyberpunk, I like to jump around uh, a lot and uh, I like to ask myself what if questions, for example, what if there were uh, steam powered cities in the sky or what if uh, the barista of your favorite coffee shop was actually half fairy. My agent told me I must charm you, I don't know how. <laughs> My name is Sven and um, I am a writer. It took me a while to figure out what the genre in which I'm writing is called. Apparently it's prose fiction, so that's what I'm going to call it. It's for people who like poetry and it's like very strange stuff to like. I mostly write about, as I say, I'm depressive, melancholic. Um... <laughs> So it's late in the day on Wednesday. I've had a big full day. I mean, it's been really hot in Riga today. Um, so I'm feeling really over hot right now. But a really wonderful thing um, that I didn't expect uh, was gonna happen was that um, also on this on this trip is Sana from the booktube channel Books and Quills. Um, so we've we've had a fun day together um, where we spent the morning out, uh, out listening to um, a presentation all about the history of Latvian literature. And um, it's been really interesting in hearing about the history of publishers in Latvia and the struggles that they um, went through and that how authors had to change the style of their writing through different periods of occupation um, like uh, when the the, um, the the Soviet was was ruling in Latvia for 45 years so it's been nice hearing about um, different key authors um, over uh, Latvian literature over the past hundred years or so and hear about some um, of the most interesting authors in recent years and then uh, later this evening we um, we went and uh, heard readings from all these different authors and they introduced themselves and talked about their different work and uh, that, that they've been doing um, but uh, also this afternoon uh, Sana and I uh, went to an art museum and uh, wandered around there and we also went to a bookstore where you had to wear these special gloves to handle all of the books, um, which uh, yeah was really unique, and because um, they didn't want uh, the the books to be like tarnished or damaged, but uh, but in a way that made it um, a much more fun experience because you know it felt like a really special thing that you were picking up these these books and it made you like respect them a lot more um, in a fun way. So uh, so yeah, and then we um, sat in the park for a long time and had an ice cream, uh, which was very nice, and um, yeah, so I'm pretty uh, tired out now. I haven't had time to do any reading today. At all. Uh, but I think I might go back to my room, read a bit more of this Oscar Wilde biography that I've been reading, and also find out who won the Women's Prize uh, this evening. Um, that's going to be announced very soon, so uh, I'll try to go li listen to the uh, live announcement. Hey everyone, I'm back in my hotel room and I'm watching the live stream announcement of the Women's Prize, waiting to hear who is going to win. So they're just uh, giving flowers to each of the authors right now. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to hear who might win. You know, I'm really hoping that it'll be Cersei because that's, I mean, just sort of going with my heart. That's sort of my favorite out of all the books. But uh, I think Anna might be right and an American marriage might win. But, you know, with uh, these judges' choices this year, it could really go in any direction. And, um, 
Oh, Madeline Miller. Oh. It was great the other evening. I, I, um, before I left for Riga, I saw all of the um, shortlisted authors giving a talk, um, although Anna Burns wasn't there. But Anna Burns is there this evening, so could that be a good sign? I mean, it'd be a major thing if a book won both the Booker Prize and the Women's Prize. Whew, but here it is. I think she's about to announce it. Oh. Wonderful books written by these intelligent, brilliant, creative women. Amazing books. But we all know... Yeah, I mean, you know, even though these wouldn't be my choices for the shortlist of books this year, like, but I really enjoyed reading all these books. I, I thought it was great. This book captivated us from the very start. It's a touching portrayal of a very special bond between two people whose lives twist and turn, who have hopes and dreams, That's it. Must, find, must find courage. It's an American marriage, isn't it? Devastating adversity, a blasting light on injustice and prejudice and what it means to be human. The winner of the 2019 Diary Jones. of Fiction is Tyari Jones. Oh. <laughs> and it was right. Well done. <laughs> Oh, and you know Anna's must be right there, right in the, the front of the audience. Oh, I wish I could be there, but how exciting. Yay, that's great. Uh, but you know, I, I really, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm happy at that because yeah, it's, it's, it's a really great novel. And you know, I think the, it's, I, what was really interesting hearing her talk um, at the, the shortlisted um, readings was, um, you know, she, she didn't want to go down the story of, of, of how he got arrested and stuff because she just wanted to, to make it an intimate tale of this, this relationship. We'll let her talk. Women's voices. I think we need women's voices now in these times more than ever. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank my publisher, Juliet Maybe, and One World Publisher. I think of them as the independent press that cares. They took a chance on me. I've never been published in the UK before, and they opened their arms to me, and I appreciate it. And I would like to ask all of you to keep in your hearts and have empathy for the millions of people who are incarcerated all around the world. They are being incarcerated in our names, and I ask that you ask, hold your governments accountable for the people who are held in bondage in our names. Every time a person is incarcerated, it represents a family separation. I would also like to thank my fellow nominees. You know, a lot is made of speaking truth to power. People say that all the time, but I feel that all of the nominees have written accessible work because we are bringing truth to the people and the people are the power. Thank you very much. Uh, what a lovely speech. Yeah, and I mean, that's what she was talking about in in the shortlist was uh, the shortlisted readings was um, you know how if, if she made it a story about the the crime and finding out what happened with the crime and um, that that would really take over the story but um, she feels with a lot of these news stories of, of, um, of you know trials of, of people are they or are they not guilty what's lost is this human story of, of, of the families that are broken apart when someone is incarcerated and so you know it, it is a political tale as well as just being a very personal tale about a one particular relationship and the struggles that this couple face. So, oh, that, that was really lovely. So, uh, yeah, wow, Terry Jones, congr congratulations. <laughs> so this is quite a big moment for me. I just stopped by the bakery and I bought four piragi, uh, the bacon and onion rolls that I made in my recipe. And if you, you watch my video and review of Soviet milk, you know this is my family recipe uh, for, from uh, Latvian generations past. And now I've bought authentic piragi in, uh, in Latvia itself. I think they're also called shpeki. And, uh, but I checked with her and they are filled with bacon and onion. And uh, so you can see behind me in the distance here, this is the Freedom Monument in Riga. And so, you know, it, it feels like a really touching moment where I've come full circle and I've uh, come back to Latvia um, through these like different generations, you know, almost a hundred years after my great grandfather was here. And uh, now I'm gonna get to do a taste test to see who Whose paragi are better? Are my uh, family recipe or my own recipe that I've sort of developed off from my family recipe or the authentic Latvian kind? So I'm going to do a taste test now. And here we go. Here's my first paragi. Hmm. 
Um, yeah, it's it's really good. I mean, it's pretty close. I think uh, the this is this feels a bit lighter in a way, and and there's um, less bacon and onion than I usually put in it. I like to have it a bit fuller rolls. I um, mean, it's more centered towards the front rather than in the actual center of, of the bun itself. I'm getting quite technical now, but <laughs> as if I were like a food judge or something. They're both really good. I don't know. I wish I could take a baking class here in Latvia. That would be really fun. Um, so I could learn the authentic recipe. But uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's really good. It's it's buttery and flaky, and it's filled with bacon and onion. I mean, what more could you want? <laughs> Friday morning and it's my last day here in Riga uh, which is really sad uh, but I'm wearing a, a shirt today that um, really reflects the the Riga colors but this is actually a shirt that I bought a while ago and um, I didn't I didn't intend for it to to, to reflect the colors of the the Latvian flag but uh, but it just happened that way uh, so so yesterday and I had a had a really long really exciting day but I was exhausted at the end and I couldn't uh, make a video at the end of it I just like fell into bed at the beginning of the day I had a really great tour of of the National Library which was so exciting and really beautifully laid out and done and um, they they have this wall of books um, when you immediately walk in the library at the at the back there's this wall of books um, called the People's Library and so the library was started in 2014 and these books were all donated to the library by people around because when they formed this National Library they invited the public to each donate a book and write within the book why the book meant so much to them and um, and so people donated all of these books and they had these, this big collection of books which they wanted to transfer into the new library once the new building was completed in 2014. So they had this big ceremony where they had volunteers from the city um, form a chain from all of the, the locations where all these books were stored to the new library and people just handed um, books to, to um, a book from person to person which is really like lovely and um, but they said it took much longer than they expected it to because by the time um, they because people kept stopping and looking at all the books that, that, that were being passed along and so um, it wasn't just you know passing from person to person it was like stopping and looking at it and discussing it and um, so yeah it made it a much longer process but there's also um, a big box within the library with all these drawers in it that contain a number of folk songs um, so they they've from for a number of years they've been gathering these folk songs um, from areas all across Latvia these folk songs that would have been lost otherwise and had them hand write them down on these slips of paper and put them in this big box so they, they can all be saved and, and commemorated and um, so yeah that that was really lovely and then they had a number of interesting exhibits like there was an exhibit about a German publisher that that lived in in Latvia for a long time and um, and of this family that started this publishing company and lived there and um, and were, were very successful in their their publishing and um, yeah a number of different exhibits about the the history of publishing and books in Latvia and then a, a whole collection of books um, from a recent state visit to, to Latvia um, where a number of different um, 
presidents and, and kings from different countries came and donated books to the National Library um, to be exhibited there. Uh, so yeah, that, that was all really lovely. And also at the National Library they, they had this program where you can donate books to the library um, to, to be saved in, in their collection and they can be sent by anyone from all over the world. You can just mail it in to the library and, um, and they'll, they'll save it along with a note of, of why that, that book is important to you. So it'd be really cool if I sent my own novel that I wrote into the library and, and it was collected there in the, the national collection because you know it'd be, it'd be a really nice touching thing to do because you know I, I have got a bit sentimental like walking around the city and thinking about how my great-grandfather was born here and walked probably walked these same streets that I'm walking now and you know I'm sure he could have never have imagined that his uh, American great-grandson would eventually come back to Latvia and you know and be walking around making a video talking about about all this so you know it's quite it's quite touching and moving thinking about all that so, uh, so yeah, yesterday I also had a, a walking tour of the city and got to really understand the layout of the old city to, to the new city and, um, and, and changes of the city over time and over many wars. And, uh, and also there's a whole district where there's this beautiful collection of Art Nouveau houses and structures that were created in, I think, uh, from 19, yeah, 1904 to 1914 of um, really elaborately made houses and structures and Riga has the largest collection of Art Nouveau uh, houses in all of Europe uh, because a lot of these other structures haven't survived over time um, but quite a few of the buildings in Riga have survived and, and are there and they're, they're just really beautiful um, from the outside. The, the, the guide kept describing them as like a birthday cake because um, they, they were so elaborate in their design and ha had these beautiful scrolls. So um, yeah and then in the evening I got to meet this Russian literary art collective called Orbita and uh, they did this whole presentation about what they do um, but they really epitomized that uh, that that whole campaign of, of I am introvert because they, they were all very introverted and, and quite awkward and and stumbling in how they they described that what their projects and what they did and so they would organize a number of different readings and different ways of presenting their poetry and text to the public whether it was um, uh, uh, mitigated through a number of different radios or or um, they would do a poetry reading on a boat and and uh, for five minutes and then the, the boat would um, sail away <laughs> and uh, yeah so um, so they, they were an interesting group but uh, but yeah very reserved and 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 quiet and and sort of mumbling and shy about how they presented their their work um, so so yeah it's, it's all been really great and interesting and today very excitingly I'm going to meet a distant cousin of mine I've been trying to arrange all week um, so my, my parents have a distant cousin who lives here um, and works as a, as a doctor but um, just um, as a sad coincidence is is away this week out of the country on a medical conference but her son named Carlos uh, it also is here and uh, I'm gonna get a chance to, to meet him and it's uh, yeah and it'll be a funny connection because uh, his name is Carl so Carlos is the, the Latvian version of Carl and my middle name is Carl and so you know that's a strong family name in um, with with my family and has been passed down and so so it's sort of funny that the two Carls, the Latvian Carl and the American Carl, will be able to, to meet each other. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to um, wander around the city a bit more today and uh, enjoy the rest of the day here before I have to fly this afternoon. But it's been really fun and uh, wonderful ex having this experience and learning about Latvian literary culture and uh, yeah, being able to experience the city itself. So I'll speak to you soon and uh, yeah, hope you're all doing well and let me know if you've read any Latvian literature, if you're interested in visiting Riga now. Um, yeah, that would be great and uh, yeah, take care.